I will now talk about how we can define our own types in Haskell. Um, and there are some very powerful uh, definitional mechanisms for defining your own types. Uh, the first one, though, is really quite simple. We can define synonyms, and some synonyms are actually built into Haskell. Uh, a simple example of that is the type string, which is really just a synonym for char list. Um, that's how strings are defined. Um, type synonyms can be very useful. We can use type synonyms to make programs a bit more readable. If we want uh, a type uh, that is uh, the Cartesian product of A with itself and itself, uh, we could define a type synonym triple of A, where A is in a type to be triple A, 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 A. Um, but there is a slight catch because type synonyms cannot be recursive. Uh, it would be tempting to write uh, a definition such as this, that type tree is a product type of int and tree list. That way we could define uh, trees whose nodes were integers, because uh, an integer value tree would be uh, a tree whose uh, root was an integer and whose children were integer valued trees. But we can't do that. What can we do if we can't use synonyms? Well, uh, we can define our own data types, and that's one of the very nice features of Haskell, that we can define our own data types. Um, a simple example of that is something we probably know already, that we could define the type Boolean uh, to be true uh, and false. So um, the elements of type Boolean are true and false, and the vertical bar um, here denotes that uh, a value can be true or it can be false. And this looks a lot like the enumeration types that we know from other programming languages. Um, and true and false, what are they? They're called term constructors of the data type Boolean. And term constructors must always begin with an uppercase letter. Um, this is not a term constructor. It's, it's the name of a type. Uh, it's also a type constructor. I'll return to that in a moment. Because we can do much more than just have enumeration types, because data types can be recursive. And this is how we can define trees, for instance. And data types in Haskell can be recursive, and because of that we can define um, the type of binary trees with integer valued nodes, and I'm going to do that now. The data type tree has the following values. Values can be leaves with an integer associated to them, or they can be branches uh, with an integer and two trees, the left subtree and the right tree associated with them. This is a recursive definition because we're defining the type tree, and um, over here we're assuming that we have the type tree. So this is a recursive definition. And um, let's look at a concrete example to see how we can construct values uh, of type tree. Now let's draw a tree whose root is 4. And below 4 we have the nodes 2, which is a leaf, and 3, which has two children, 5, which is a leaf, and 17, which is also a leaf. This should be an element of uh, the data type tree that we just defined. Let's see what that looks like in Haskell. The data type tree, as we saw a moment ago, how could we then represent our tree uh, as an element of this data type? Well, let's define my tree. My tree uh, has four as its root, so it's a branch. With four as its root and then it contains two leaves, or rather it contains a leaf, two, and it contains a subtree, which is also a branching tree, which has three as its root, as its root and a leaf with five, and a leaf with 17, Oops, that should be a capital L, 
belief 17. There we go. Let's send this to Haskell. What is the type of my tree? Well, it's tree. Now, isn't that nice? Can we get the value of my tree shown? Let's see what happens if we ask Haskell for that. It says, oh, it's not an instance of show, show tree. So we can't really, we can't really show uh, my tree inside the Haskell interpreter. How can we deal with that? Well, elements of a data type cannot be displayed unless we declare this to be allowed. So to do this, we need to say that the data type we're defining is in the type class show, and we do this by writing deriving show at the end of our data type de definition. And if we do that, a tree is now a type in the type class show. If we want to write functions over data types, it's very convenient to use pattern matching. Suppose we want to define a if we want to define functions over data types, then pattern matching is really, really convenient. Here's an example. Suppose we want to define a function um, that sums the integers found in an integer value tree. Then um, we need to have two clauses, one for each of the two formation rules in the data type definition for tree. Uh, we need to have a clause for the case where the term constructor is leaf. That is, the leaf is, sorry, the tree is a leaf. And if we have a leaf that's labeled with the integer x, we return x. If we have a tree, an element of tree that's a branch labeled x and with subtrees t1 and t2, then we call some tree recursively on the subtrees t1 and t2. We get values v1 and v2, and we return the sum of x, this x and v1 and v2. Uh, whenever we perform a function call on a function that's defined by pattern matching, the semantics is we traverse the clauses from first to last and then we apply the first clause whose pattern matches the argument of our function call. That's really all. Um, and you might wonder what's the type of some tree? Well, um, Let's see. Some tree is a function that takes a tree, so it's a function from tree to something. What does it return? Well, let's see. Uh, from the definition of the data type tree, we see that uh, one of the term constructors is leaf int, so x is an int, so we can return an int. So for this to make sense, this must be tree to int. But in fact, we can do even more. There's no reason to limit ourselves to integer values trees. If we want, we can define a completely general type of binary trees whose nodes are elements of any type A. Uh, and this is what we do here. The type tree of A... Uh, um, a value trees um, has values that are leaves uh, that have uh, a value of type A. All their branches uh, that have a root of t uh, which is of type A and two subtrees that are of type tree of A. Um, this is a constructor, but it's a type constructor that we use for building types. Whereas leaf and branch are constructors that we use for building terms, so they're called term constructors. So there is a difference here. Um, type constructors and term constructors are allowed to have the same name because they belong to different syntactic categories. So that in itself is not a problem. And sometimes for reasons of readability, it can be nice to have them to coincide, but you don't have to. Now, lists are in fact just data types. Lists are just an example of a recursive data type. 
Here is the definition of the data type list A. And its elements are nil and uh, elements for which the term construct cons has been applied to uh, an element of type A and an element of list A. So the list 1, 2, 3, 4 is really just this and doesn't this remind you of Lisp or Scheme? It certainly certainly reminds me of Lisp and Scheme. Finally, here's a very nice uh, way of using uh, recursive data types, namely to express abstract syntax. And this is also a major selling point of languages like Haskell. Um, if we want to write the, um, the formation rules for expressions E and expression E, could be a value, it could be a plus expression, it could be a multiplication expression, or it could be a parenthesized expression. Um, and this can be expressed directly as a data type, the data type of expressions can be values, they can be plus expressions, they can be multiplication expressions, or parenthesized expressions. And if we want um, these expressions to be able to be shown in the Haskell system, we must make sure that they're of the type class show. So here we write, so we write deriving show here. Given this we can then write 3 plus 7 in parentheses times 2 plus 9 as this rather large value. Uh, so, of course, one would probably want to have a pretty printing uh, function that would pretty print this as a string. Conversely, we would probably also want to have a parser that could take uh, a string representation and uh, return uh, a value of the data type. Uh, but once we know that we can represent abstract syntax as data types, then it becomes very, very easy to, um, to manipulate abstract syntax trees directly in Haskell, and that makes Haskell a very good candidate for, for writing um, interpreters and compilers. It is really quite straightforward.